Hey guys, I am going to show you how to turn um, just about any nylon halter into a breakaway halter. So a lot of us have just like plain old nylon halters sitting around our barn. And if you're like me, I don't like to use them unless they have some type of breakaway just because you never know what your horse is going to get into. Um, but instead of just tossing these out, I like to just go ahead and convert them to a breakaway. And so the first thing that you want to do, well, let me show you the things that you'll need. So you'll need a hole punch, or you can actually use a drill if you don't have a leather punch. Um, you'll need a strip of leather, and this is going to be your breakaway part. So um, if you want it to be super breakaway, you want to find a really thin piece of leather. Um, a lot of times an old stirrup leather, the kind that are, is not lined um, or doubled up is a good option. Or um, if you have a bridle that's been broken or even an old crown piece um, from an old halter is good, but you don't want it to be too thick or it'll be hard because we're going to have to uh, triple it up right here. So um, you obviously need a nylon halter probably scissors or some way to cut the leather. And then the last thing I have here is another strip of leather um, and it's cut really thin and I've got it soaking in warm water because it was pretty stiff and I need it to be flexible. So um, you can use um, baling twine for this or any kind of like string or rope. Um, or you can also use a Chicago screw if you have those. I um, don't have those the right size with me right now. So I'm gonna be using this little piece of leather um, string that I made by just cutting a really narrow strip off of another piece of leather. So the first thing you wanna do is you're going to cut this part off. Um, sometimes you can just slide your scissors through here and cut all the stitching. That's gonna take a lot longer than I want, so I'm just gonna cut it like this. Um, cut that off and make sure you know where you cut it off and what how these were oriented so you get it back on there correctly. Um, and then I'm gonna cut it off from here. Ooh, I just broke my scissors. Awesome. I'm just going to use this to saw the rest of this apart. There we go. Okay. Well, goodbye, scissors. Hopefully I don't need those the rest of the time. Okay, so now I have my buckle. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your leather, and I probably should have soaked this too because it's pretty stiff. And you're going to run it back through your ring and then decide... I want this to basically be the same length that this was. Um, and if you want to sh shorten it up or lengthen it, um, you can absolutely do that. Um, all right, so I'm gonna bring this back just a little bit. Okay, I'll make my bend there. And you want these pieces to overlap by about an inch and a half to two inches, give or take. And here is where I need my scissors because um, I need to cut right there. So I'm gonna grab another pair of scissors. I'll be right back. Okay, here we go. Got my other pair of scissors. Hope these don't do the same thing. Okay, we're good. All right, and I actually am gonna go ahead and soak that in water too, because it's pretty um, pretty stiff, and I want it to be a little more pliable to work with. Okay. 
Okay. That's a lot better. And I chose a pretty wimpy leather. You can see it already has cracks in it, um, which is why it's not a part of a bridle anymore. Um, but I actually don't mind that because I want it to be breakable. Um, I would rather this crappy piece of leather break than my horse get hurt if he were to get caught on something. Um, Okay, so it's about the same length. So now what I'm gonna need to do is make a little um, place in here for the buckle to come through. So I'm gonna do that with my leather punch. I'm just gonna punch a hole here. And then just keep punching holes all the way down until I have like a line to allow for the little tab on the buckle. Okay. And you can kind of test this out and see if you're buckle has enough room to kind of wiggle around and that when it's closed I'm gonna do one more little spot just to make it a little bit longer and if you're real picky you can smooth that out um, but I'm not gonna be real picky on this. Okay, so now that I have that spot, um, I'm going to put two holes right here. punch is not cooperating there we go so I'm gonna do one there and you want these to be like about an inch apart okay so now that I have those there I'm gonna fold this over the way that it's going to go and I'm gonna go through the next layer because you want to make these match up even if you just get it part of the way through. Now I can at least see where it needs to go on this piece. Okay, so that matches up there. And now, I'm just gonna make a mark and see where this one needs to go. And I'm gonna do this one there. go through one more layer so with those matched up I'm gonna go through one more layer
my leather punch has definitely seen better days. Okay, and I'm gonna match these holes up and do my last hole. Okay, so I have all my holes punched. That's probably the hardest part. And then when I overlap everything, they line up. So now, what I'm gonna do is put this through here. I'm gonna figure out which direction my buckle needs to go. So, let's see. The tab part should go up so that when you buckle it, it's like that. So make sure you get this facing the right direction. The little tab should be kind of curled this way, and that's going to be pointing up towards the strap like that. So now that those match up and um, it looks pretty good, that's where. I'm going to dry this off and hopefully this will work. The easiest way to thread something like this through a hole like this is by getting like a paper clip and almost making a needle out of it. Um, so I'm going to grab something like that so I can do that. All right, so I've got my paper clip and I'm just gonna twist it around a little bit. So I've kind of more or less made myself a little needle. Um, and I'm gonna go through, let's see, I'm gonna start on this side. I'm gonna go through one hole See if I can pull this through. Okay, I think my leather strip is actually too fat. So I'm gonna try to trim it down. You can also use a zip tie for this and that would honestly be easier. Um, I just don't have a zip tie. So I'm actually just gonna grab some string um, that's pretty tough and I'll be right back. So this part of it does not have to be breakaway, the string or zip ties or whatever you use um, because the leather should break. So I'm gonna use it doubled up um, and got my little fake needle here and I'm just gonna go through the bottom hole. And you wanna make sure you don't go all the way through. Um, and I'm going through all three layers of that lower hole. Okay. And then I'm going to go through all three layers of that upper hole. Again, don't let it pull all the way through. Okay, take it out of here, all right, and so now what I can do is just tie these off really well. I'm 
just going to use a plain old square knot and then double it up a couple times. But honestly, I think a zip tie would probably be the easiest thing to use here. Just make sure the buckle of the zip tie is facing out, otherwise that'll rub really, um, really badly. So I'm just going to do a few more knots. Cut this off right there. And after all that, I now have turned this halter into a breakaway. And the nice thing is, if this is really ugly, this tab kind of covers it anyway, so you don't even notice. But if your horse were to get caught on something or pull back, this would break um, and your horse would be able to get out of the halter. So anyway, hope this is helpful. Give me a like, give me a follow. Thanks for watching.